Hey folks, Bob. Do something a little bit different today. Um, I, you know, I've been ignoring emails. <laughs> oh, my camera lens is foggy. Uh, I haven't been ignoring emails. I just haven't been paying much attention to the uh, the entrepreneurial world for a while. Um, I show up to watch the occasional Rich Sheffron live stream. Um, actually being interviewed on Fire Builders tomorrow about uh, a new business that I started and why I tent I chose to kind of walk away from the marketing world for a bit. The only thing I'm doing in the marketing world right now is I'm finishing up uh, the selling lab stuff and getting that off and going. I don't know why I get so much fog. I'm going to have to put some alcohol on my lens or something. But um, I, I just walked away from it. Um, I've done it before. <laughs> I, I took some time off uh, back in 2000. Uh, four or five to to focus on personal development stuff uh, more than like training more than the entrepreneurial stuff but oh say hello to the ladies hello ladies <laughs> so um, I just I, I hit a crossroads when it came to the entrepreneurial stuff um, I was burning out Let's see if I can get this little bunny in here for you. Uh, let's see. There he is. I got a bunch of these. Uh, he's not showing up real well. I got a bunch of these little uh, baby bunnies running around here. Um, but I took a break from a lot of the entrepreneurial stuff simply because I was um, I was tired of some certain things. Um, not not teaching marketing and stuff. I always love teaching. I'm um, not doing it. I always love doing it. What I got tired of is um, I got burned out from the, not burned out, but tired of the client work. Um, but not for the reasons you might think. It wasn't because it was like too tough or too time consuming for any of those things. It was mainly because um, people were focused just on the, the wrong um, purpose of it all all the time and uh, I just got to the point where I was like well who am I to say what you know they should be focused on they're my clients you know they can be focused on whatever they want but I'd watch people that I was doing work for like I coach them I write strategy for them I write copy for them and then they go out and they'd lie like I knew the inner workings of these people's businesses forward and back and um I, I knew how much money they were making or not making. I knew what they were struggling with and not struggling with. And what was going on was um, I'd teach them for a while and I'd write their stuff. And then they'd turn around and teach my stuff like it was a brand new idea they came up with. And charge like a shit ton of money for it to teach it to people. And meanwhile, at the same time, they're paying me to do the stuff that they don't even know how to do because they didn't take the time to learn it, but they're going to teach it to other people. Then there was another end of the spectrum where uh, people were... It's like at every turn. Like say somebody paid them $5,000, their next thought is how can I get $10,000 more out of these people? Then their next thought was how can I sell this $50,000 platinum mastermind or something like this. And I'm like, Jesus, you didn't even deliver the value that you said you are going to deliver. Um, and I'm guilty of that myself. I've skipped out on some projects over the years and missed the, you know, screwed up a couple times. But I work towards correcting those things as much as I possibly can. And what was going on was some of these folks were literally just um, moving on with other things before they correct the problems and continuously trying to take more and more and more. Like I bought a product off somebody, a really well-known marketer actually, um, last year sometime. And around like Christmas time, I said, hey, like, is there any updates to this? Because it's not, you know, there's, you only know, recorded one video and there's supposed to be like a whole course here and they go, oh yeah it's coming after i get the, after we get through the holiday season i'm like oh okay yeah that's fine and then nothing and then 
they deleted me from their Slack group and then they blocked me on Facebook and I'm just like, okay, hold on a second. I paid for this stuff and there was no site to get a refund or any, and I'm just like, well, that sucks, you know. So over the past five or six years or so, I've been working on some projects and I started working on them fairly publicly at first and then um, th people were putting roadblocks in the way and I noticed that it was getting more and more and more and then I started hearing people talking about certain things that I was doing and then all of a sudden somebody else was doing it and I'm just like mm, all right so I stopped sharing what I was going to do and I started teaching uh, live privately um, in my local area uh, to get things set in stone like get the property straightened up um, get some class curriculum put together um, experiment with different courses with different groups of people um, and basically what i decided to do was um, i you guys know me for long enough that know I, I spend most of my time in the outdoors even my clients always knew during hunting season it was almost impossible to get a hold of me because i'd be outside all day so if you're going to call me call me at night um, but you know, over the years, I've been studying up on my past family history and everything and how Ellsworth Jaeger and a few other people in our family, like, helped sculpt certain things like the Boy Scout of America handbook and um, traveling with uh, Native Americans to, to learn about their heritage and learn about the skills that they had and relay those things to other people so it wouldn't be forgotten. And um, works that were curated over the past, you know, hundred and some odd years and learning about the deeper part of our family's history, the Jaeger side of our family, going back into like, you know, northeastern Germany where Jaegers were hunters and that's what that name meant. And I realized that, you know, as a kid and as a, a young adult and then middle-aged adult that I've always just been drawn towards the wilderness and teaching life skills and, um, focusing on you know self-reliance and self-sufficiency and sustainability and we were never preppers we just that was common sense <laughs> you know he stocked up on foods and put money away in case there was an emergency or you know but most importantly it was you know parents spending time with their children not paying for a way to not have to have anything to do with their children what i mean by that is you know the, there's kids out there that are part of like seven or eight different sporting or extracurricular activities and you know um, I hear parents like a kid trying to ask a parent a question they're like not right now not right now I don't have time for this and it's like and then recently um, very recently um, part of an organization that I'm part of I won't name it um, you know, during this whole pandemic thing, we were trying to find a way for, for people to, to allow their children to have the activities that the children deserve. And everybody like voted it down. Ah, oh, no, we're at, we're over that. We don't want anything to do with it. The kids won't even want to do that. And I'm just like, what? Like once again, you know, if I sit down and ask my kids, Hey, would you like to do this? It's, it's usually going to be yes. Uh, kids like new experiences. And they love spending time with their parents, with their family. They really do. Um, I've never known a kid that comes from good stock that doesn't like spending time with their family. They, they, they want their parents' attention all the time. So what I started doing was I diverted my focus away from like training um, grown men or women, uh, wilderness and self-reliance skills and things like that. And I focus that attention towards teaching uh, fathers and sons uh, first um, or fathers and daughters um, to work together to create something to solve problems um, to make new accomplishments and enjoy the the world for what it has the wilderness which is what I love and um, I got, I got a lot a little flack for that they're like well why aren't the moms there well there they'll be that time um, I'm, I, I'm developing something particularly for that. But when I look at what's going on in the world today, um, I just, I think to myself all the time, 
where's that kid's dad at? Because I know, you know, being raised by a, a very loving father who had strong work ethic and um, one that wouldn't tolerate you back talking to them or, or, you know, or talking down to your mother or anything like that. And somebody that truly did love us and that worked his tail off to make sure we had everything we needed. Um, I know that if that figure is present in your life in a constructive way, that you're not going to be walking down the streets burning buildings and throwing bottles at people and spitting at police officers and all these different things. Somewhere, and this is just what I came to actually quite a few years ago, and I, I've been working steadily towards it, is um, the family system is broken right now. And I don't know if it's just in the U.S., but I'm guessing it's pretty much around the world. And um, I wanted to create programs where families could come together and not only learn together, but actually there's a segment in my programs where the children teach the, the fathers, teach the adults um, what to do. And it becomes increasingly more fun for me. Um, my goals right now is uh, to get a property where a proper school can be constructed. Um, it's okay that I use my, my property here to do the things that I do, and I borrow some land to do some other things I need to do, but I, I tend to feel restricted at times. Um, plus, I want to go to more... I'm experiencing a, a need to go to more adventurous type um, locations and try some new things, um, because I'm, I'm big on trying my own skills or learning new skills myself. But I think what I'm getting at is, is <coughs> when I realized that um, most of my clientele was focused on how much can they take instead of how much can they give. And people are going to tell me I'm wrong on this, but I'm not. Um, I know these people. I, I know their personalities. I know their attitudes. And um, when, when I find that my clientele is focused more on what they can take than what they can contribute in their business, um, and they're doomed for failure, and they constantly lie about their abilities to their clientele just so they can get the next dollar. I don't want to be part of that. And I'm starting to see, sadly, more and more in the internet marketing industry, in the sales industry, in the coaching industries, uh, the business development industry in general, um, there's more unscrupulous people than I've ever seen before. And it could be because of the prevalence of the internet, um, making those people more prevalent than we would have seen, you know, back 2005 and before. Um, but it's probably that my head is just like, I can't ignore it anymore. I've seen it before. I never liked it. I call people out on it and I usually get the shit end of the deal once I did. And now I have to kind of like step back and say, you know, did I set out my life to teach or do um, business development, business strategy, and, and um, copywriting and things like that for a living. No, I didn't. Um, I set out uh, to go to art school and to construct things and play music and enjoy the wilderness and um, create things. I've always set out to teach. I love to teach. I taught in the martial arts. Um, I taught when I was in music. I taught when I was in art. Um, I taught in sales and marketing. Uh, you name it. I love teaching. Uh, to me, not only is it probably one of the most rewarding things for me to do on my day to day, um, it's also a way for me to further solidify my skills. The more I teach, the more I do. Uh, the more I have to make sure that my skills are complete and good enough for the people that are paying me to learn those skills. So I'm constantly striving to be better in everything that I do and all the things that I teach. Um, right now I'm experimenting with some new blacksmithing stuff. I stopped doing that for years and I don't know why. I don't know why I stopped welding and blacksmithing and metal shaping and woodworking and all those things. And for the past five years I, I've been hard focused on those types of things. Um, I've been focused more on growing and being um, self-sustaining and self-reliant and you know, raising animals for food and um, eggs, not, not meat. I, I don't raise chickens for meat. 
um, growing my gardens and growing fruits and making sure that everywhere you, where you walk on our property, there's food everywhere you go. Um, and I'm enjoying it. Like I'm, I feel more fulfilled now than I have in probably a decade. But most importantly, um, one thing I've noticed over the past few months, like the lockdown happened like back in February um, in Pennsylvania where I live. I don't, you know, it's different everywhere, right? Um, I heard a lot of people complaining about, you know, oh, my kids are driving me nuts. Man, I love having my kids home all the time. Love it. Love it. Uh, my wife was off work for like two months. She works at a preschool. She's a preschool teacher. And um, I loved it. it. We were all home again. It used to be that way all the time. We were all home together all the time. And then when the Obamacare thing happened, it canceled our medical policy completely. And it was going to cost me like two, three grand a month to have medical because of my income and everything. So my wife using her college education she wanted to pursue her career she went out and got a job and and it was mainly to to get the medical benefits and to to pursue the thing that she went to school for and more and more she would love to be home still and um what i'm tempting to construct is something that will allow us to to have that um forever without thinking twice and it can be difficult don't get me wrong um starting anything new is challenging and scary and it, it's filled with all kinds of different things that you, you wouldn't possibly think of. But I'm focused right now on writing what I want to write, um, creating the curriculum that I want to create because for the past oh decade or so I've had partners on and off that kind of they said, oh, you should do this, and hey, people want this, and hey, people want this. And every time I did a course or a curriculum or something, I didn't want to do it. Like the last one that I actually enjoyed doing was Critical Mass Trilogy back in 2008, 2009. I enjoyed it because I created it. That was my idea. Um, it wasn't highly marketable, but it was something I wanted to do. And um, I had good students, and I made close bonds with good people through that. Then um, recently was the Selling Lab Copy Shop. Uh, which I'm finishing up. I, I loved teaching that. Uh, once again, not the highest of marketability, um, but it wasn't because it's not a marketable program. It's because I didn't want to market it. It was kind of like my, on my way out. I feel like recording this stuff and teaching it to somebody just to kind of like close that chapter because I started writing copy when I was like 14 or 15 and I'm almost 43 now. Okay, so for almost 30 years, I've been doing that. And it's not like it was when I was working with like Henry Hillman and Jim Rohn and Billy Mays and people like that and Arthur Conway from uh, Dal America. Um, it's different now. It's I don't enjoy it. I, I enjoy writing copy like for my stuff. I don't, I don't enjoy writing it for these other uh, clients anymore. And then um, last month, one of my clients died. Uh, he's been my client for 12 years, and um, I just realized that I'm I'm over that that chapter of my life and um, going on 30 years almost three decades is a long time to do anything and I never took the time to fully commit to the path that I wanted to take and uh, for whatever reason so that's what I'm doing now and I'm loving every minute of it now what I still will do is I'd still coach people in business and I'd still coach entrepreneurs and I definitely take on one-on-one -on -one uh, coaching clients for copywriting, teaching them how to write copy and stuff like that. I, I don't think I could ever walk away from that. I enjoy it too much. Um, but I won't be uh, taking clients to write copy for anymore. Um, I will not be writing marketing strategy for anybody but um, close acquaintances, close friends. Um, and I definitely won't be taking on new copywriting clients um, likely ever again. And I love saying that. I really do love saying that. Like, I feel really good about it. I have to admit, I went through quite a depression last year, and I couldn't put my finger on it why that was. And really what it came down to was I was just disgusted with the industry that I was working in, and I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And I felt like every single day when I woke up, I just did not want to get out of bed. And so much so that I'd stay up until like 5 o'clock in the morning and sleep till 3 in the afternoon. Um, I, I just didn't want to be awake when other people were awake basically and I snapped out of it 
And it was because I sat down with myself and said, why? Why is it like this? I'm, I'm typically a happy person. And it was because I wasn't doing what I knew I was truly meant to do and what I truly desired to do. Um, even with the wilderness stuff, I find myself, I've developed a curriculum to teach to entrepreneurs and business owners while utilizing uh, uh, wilderness skills and outdoors kind of workshops and things. And I'm loving the development of that program. Um, I'm not putting any details out about that. If anybody wants to be involved in these kind of things or do like a father, son or father, daughter, or mother, son, mother, daughter type thing, they want that kind of, it's not cheap, but if you want to do that kind of thing, uh, message me, just message me. That's the only way you're going to find out the details about it is if we actually sit down and talk about it. And the only reason is, is because I know there's a few unscrupulous people out there that would like to swipe some of that stuff. And I'm, I'm working on some legals, like uh, business legals, to protect my intellectual property as I go here. Um, I, I'll tell you honestly, for years with my internet marketing trainings and my business tra development trainings, and I never, I never took the route of protecting my intellectual property. And the reason was is because, for one, it wasn't important for me to do so. I didn't really care. I've told students for years, you know, teach what you what you want, uh, but make sure you know how to do it. Like actually test your results and and figure it out. Don't just be charging people to teach them something you don't know what the hell you're doing, right? Um, but the other thing is, is uh, it's getting dark out. Um, I just didn't care. I didn't care enough about that stuff that I created to, to protect it in any way. This is my legacy project. This is something I want to, I want it to be around even when I'm, when I'm gone. Uh, I want it to be something that my children can have and their children can have. And I want to create something substantial. I found a piece of property uh, that I really like to purchase. And it's about 80 grand or so. Um, I don't have the money for it right now, but it's a dream. It's something I look to create. And uh, my mind goes to, here's my marketing mind, my business development mind. My, my mind is, uh, you know, find a thousand uh, fans and give them the, as much value as I possibly can and get each one of them to pay me $100 in a year and go buy the place. Give, give people a million dollars worth of value for 100 bucks. You know, I, <laughs> to me, that's, that's what business used to be, and that's what I'm going to start making it again, and I hope that many of you do the same. Um, I'm not going to disappear from the marketing and sales world completely. Like I said, um, I'm doing an interview on Fire Builders um, tomorrow as of the time of this video is being recorded, and um, I'm looking forward to it because we're talking about survival and, and sharing traditions with our family and our children and and the things that I love to talk about, the things that many of my students and clients that know me know that I talk about all the time anyway and have for years when we're on private uh, mentoring sessions together. So I'm excited about this new road. And um, if I've let anybody down because of it over to, you know, because they're ex upset that I'm doing what I'm doing or they wanted me to do business stuff for them or whatever, well... Uh, honestly, you can only poke a wild animal for so long before he decides to either lash back or move on. <laughs> and I'm moving on. <laughs> so, take care.